You're tuned into Frack 77. I'm your host, Alex, and today we're going to be strapping on a set of weathered cowboy boots and strapping a saddle onto the latest pony car offering from Ford. The Ford Mustang GT certainly appeals to the masses, in part because of its bang for the buck value. But there's something that GT riders like even more about the Ford Mustang, and that's the ability to modify and individualize their ride. So with the help of the owner of this 2022 Mustang GT, we'll be running through a couple of things that you can do to make your Mustang your very own. In this multi-part series, we'll be running through some modifications from the cheap and cheerful through to the more complex things like suspension and short shift kits. So if that's the kind of content you're interested in, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell as well, and you won't miss any of the updates. The Ford Mustang GT was introduced in 1964, and nearly 50 years later, we got this, the sixth generation Ford Mustang GT. That was 2015 and it was the first time Australians managed to get their hands on it in large numbers. And boy, was it a success. You see, the looming collapse of Ford and Holden's Australian manufacturing plants was about to leave a big hole in the market for V8 loving petrol heads and car enthusiasts. And Ford was very clever to capitalize on that. In fact, from 2016, sale figures for these cars ranged between six and 9,000, with numbers tapering off a little in the more recent years due to the pandemic. But there's no doubt that the Mustang was here to stay and with the departure of our local muscle car manufacturing and the absence of competitors from Chevy and Dodge, the Mustang really was uncontested in its price point. And that was really key to its success. So what do you get for your circa $70,000? At the heart of the Mustang GT is Ford's latest version of its V8 5 liter Coyote engine, pushing out a 339 kilowatts and 556 Newton meters of torque. That's being pushed through either a six speed manual gearbox or a 10 speed automatic all the way to the back. And the exhaust gases are escaping through a bimodal exhaust with quad tips. And let me tell you, it sounds pretty good. Take a listen. Visually, the Mustang runs true to its heritage with its long swooping bonnet, its two plus two cab design and muscular rear haunches. And the more you look, the more you notice links to past generations, whether it's the shark bite nose, the grill design, the tri bar tail lights, or the round gauges. It really is like looking back along a family tree and noticing inherent traits being passed along. Inside the cabin, you'll find a retro styled cockpit with some premium materials and some not so premium materials. The tech is good, but not groundbreaking. But with the imminent arrival of the latest Mustang, Ford's interior design manager, Ricardo Garcia, has promised that the next Mustang is gonna be the most digital version ever, which might help bring this cabin up to date. Now, I'm not gonna give a full review. There's plenty of videos out there for that already. And besides, we have some modifications to fit to this car. But personally, having never driven one of these, I'm keen to see what all the fuss is about. So let's go for a drive. Okay, straight off the bat. Whoa, it's definitely got plenty of power. And the soundtrack that accompanies it is just amazing. I'm actually quite surprised at the volume Ford has put into this exhaust. I don't think you'd actually need to change the exhaust system at all. The handling of the car is good, um, but you are aware of the 1800 kilos that this thing is carrying. So if we come into a roundabout here, it'll turn in well, a little bit of understeer. And of course you can use the rear of the car and that extra power to drive it around. It is a lot of fun. Uh, it's a very raw experience, but I think there could be some tweaks to the suspension. And again, I think Jerry's got something lined up for that as well. One of the things I am struggling with is the clutch pedal. Don't get me wrong, I love 
the auto rev matching. That's a really cool feature. But there's something about the spring. It's not a very linear progression. And so the clutch pedal sort of comes up with a bit more energy in certain areas of its travel than in others. It's something to get used to, but it is a fix that Jerry has, and they'll be coming up in one of the following episodes. Overall though, the Mustang is a great package. Massive power, an awesome soundtrack, good handling, and a really imposing road presence. Overall, I'm very impressed, Ford. So like I said before, this isn't a full review. There's plenty of videos for that. But here's my one issue with the Mustang. Obviously they've come into Australia with great numbers and so exclusivity is not a strong point. In fact, you see lots of these out on the road. But because they come in, in such large numbers and are so popular over in the States, the modified car scene for these is extraordinary, which means that you can put almost anything onto your car to totally individualize it and modify it. And it's because of that abundance of modifications that are available that Jerry actually bought this car. So over the next couple of episodes, he's gonna be doing a couple of aesthetic and technical modifications to the Mustang GT to individualize it and make it his very own. So without further ado, let's head over to his place and get cracking. All right, welcome to Jerry's garage. This is Jerry, uh, the owner of the Mustang. And behind me, we have a whole bunch of aesthetic parts that we're gonna be fitting today. So let's run through those. So we would classify these as aesthetic options, stuff to make your car look a little bit better. So what was the idea behind these, Jerry? Well, I went and found a whole bunch of parts that were dirt cheap, and I thought, well, if they don't fit, we don't have to use them. But it, the idea was to black out the car as much as I could uh, on a budget and, and see what, uh, what it would look like. Excellent. All right, so what do we got? Let's start from this end here. What's this little guy? Well, we've got these little caps that were dirt cheap um, they go into the doors and give you another pocket on the inside mm -hmm. we now have just the blackouts for the five o's there's some debate whether the horse is going to go on there yeah okay now there's got side reflectors and these are little blackout bits for the side reflectors that yeah. Uh, yeah. these are a, a few skirts for the um, wings in front of the rear wheels so these are the rears or the front? these are the rears and yeah. these are the fronts okay all right and then we've got some little tidy patch uh, covers for the door latches, etc. Yeah. And here we have um, a little bit of a winglet for underneath the front indicators to get the front end a bit of a harder look. Mm -hmm. We've also bought some exhaust tips that uh, potentially should fit on them dimensionally. We haven't tried those yet. Okay. But, uh, should look good. And then we have some black door handles to replace the white ones. All right, and most of these should be really quite simple to install, right? I guess we're going to find out. Yeah, the idea was to be able to do these all fairly quickly, so we'll see what we can uh, achieve. So we're going to start off with the exhaust tips and these basically slide over the existing exhaust tips. Now the angle of the cut is slightly different from the factory so when you're sliding it across basically you want it so that when the top of the factory system hits the edge of this lip here then it's basically home. And these ones have a really nice rounded edge they're also sort of a dark chrome color give it a bit more of a menacing look. And yeah really simple just slip straight across the factory system. Now, if you didn't have strong hands like Jerry, I guess you would cover the end with a, a soft cloth and uh, maybe use a rubber mallet or something to, to get these in so that you don't damage the ends of the tips. Easy done.
Since we're around the back of the car, let's talk about the factory reflectors that are in the back bumper. So Jerry has got another set and painted them black. Now there's a bit of controversy as to which color. Even he's a bit unsure as to whether to go black or white, but because we're kind of blacking out the car in this round of modifications, he's gone with the black option. So we'll pop these in, see how it looks. If we don't like it, it's really easy to change. These are pretty easy to install. They don't require any tooling. Just have to reach behind, find the locator clip, press that, and they come out. Install the other one, and done. So whilst Jerry's doing the other side, what do you guys reckon? Do we leave it black? Do we change it to white? Do we go back to the factory orange reflector? Leave a comment down below, let us know what you think. Okay, next up we're gonna move into the cabin with some accessory covers. So this is for the door latch, then we have one for the actual hinge mechanism. And this little guy sits in the armrest cutout, I guess, and makes it into a little pocket. So now you've got a place to put your keys or your phone or anything like that. So first up, this is what we're covering up here, basically, is the latch mechanism or whatever. So Jerry doesn't like how this kind of sticks out and uh, is all metal and stuff. So a real simple plastic cover that pops over the top, literally clicks into place that easy. I think that looks 10 times better. All right, on the other side, we have this hinge here and we have a similar cover. That just pops over the top, really OEM finish. I think that looks fantastic. And finally, this is the pocket that we're talking about here. That just pops in there like that. And now you've got a place to put your phone, keys, whatever you like, without it falling through into the lower section. Nice and easy. Okay, that's the really easy stuff. Now it starts to get a little bit more technical. So first up, we're replacing the white door handles with some black one. So I think it's important to point out that Jerry actually went and bought separate door handles, but it's easy enough. Um, we'll show you the process of taking them out and then just painting your own. Either way you do it, it doesn't really matter. So first thing, remove that little rubber bung at the end. T27 Torx bit into that little hole at the end of the door. And what are we feeling for? You're pulling the door handle out a bit. Okay. And then what you will do is you'll feel the door handle release. So you keep pressure on the door handle, pulling yeah. outwards. All right. There we go and then sort of jiggle it out. Yep. Perfect. Before we get too far, we'll take this out. So the same on the passenger side, this bit just basically pulls out. Um, and, and we've the, got to get this cover off to maintain the lock. So and this is the specialized tooling, is it? Just using your key? Well, it's for the key itself, yeah. So yeah. that's its intent. Pop the new one on. On. And that just pops straight back in. What I do is hold this in like this. Okay. So we've just noticed that this plug doesn't pull out as far as the passenger side, so we've got to change our technique a little bit. There we are. Okay. You can see Jerry's holding it just by wedging a little screwdriver in there. Pop the new one in. And you click. heard that click, yep. So now that's nice and secure. And then just guide it right back into the hole. And then basically secure it with that Torx bit screw at the end. There we go, that's popped in. Job done. All right, next. I don't know why, but black door handle, look at that. That does look pretty good. It doesn't look out of place. No but it matches the black hair. Yep, next up, change the badges. Yeah. Let's get to it. So taking the badges off is like any other badge, they're just stuck on with the glue. So you need to get your fishing line behind it and clear that out to remove the badge. But one thing to consider is that the back of the badges actually have these little lugs. So you need to be aware of those. 
they're different from side to side. So here on the right hand side, the top of the five and the bottom of the zero has a lug. But on the other side, I think it's top of the zero, bottom of the five or whatever it is. It's good that we have the lugs because we don't need to put tape around to get the appropriate placement for the new badge. It'll just slot straight into those holes. Well, we're absolutely smashing through the little DIY jobs. Next up, the front canards. Curious to see how these are gonna look. So we're just doing a bit of a dummy fit. We've cleaned the area with uh, rubbing alcohol. Okay, this fitment doesn't seem too bad. Now, Jerry has added an extra line of 3M tape because he was a bit worried that that might not be enough. So we're not entirely sure if we like this, right? Yeah, no, don't know yet. If you were to leave it, what would you change about the install? Would you leave it as a 3M tape or? Yeah, I don't know. I would slastic it probably. Um, it is fairly flimsy, but. Uh... I mean, it's not too bad. It's fairly solid on there at the moment, but remember this is at the front of the car. So when you're doing 110, there's a fair bit of pressure sitting on this, but it probably won't go anywhere but if you wanted to be double sure, you could Celastic it. I don't know, I think it's kind of cool. Before and after. Let me know what you think in the comments below. So the final piece on the in-store schedule was these guys here. This one sits at the side of the front bumper and this one sits at the back of the side skirt. But we've had a bit of a look at it and, well, Jerry's not 100% sure about fitting them. Basically, there's a visible side there, the finish isn't great, um, the fitment we're not 100% sure of. Let me show you what I mean. So we checked these out. They, um, the finish on the top is different than the finish on the bottom, which doesn't match any of the combining um, finishes on either of the plastic piece nearby and installed. It doesn't really provide the value that we were hoping for. Um, you know, it's, as I said, it might be taking some use to getting used to, but at this stage, we think we'll leave them out. And it's the same story at the back with this piece here. It actually requires a bit of modification, like removing a little mudguard thing at the back. And we're just not 100% sure if it's actually the look that Jerry wants to go for. What are yeah, your thoughts, mate? Without the front one, you know, it seems pointless putting a rear one on there. Yeah. So we'll leave it as it is for now and uh, enjoy the bits we've done. Excellent. So before we end the episode, we actually have one more thing that we have, which is a black version of the Pony. Now, because these are little cheap DIY mods, it's okay to change your mind as you go along. You haven't lost too much, but you'll see what I mean when we hold the black one up. It literally just disappears into the grill. And I think the distinction to actually see the Pony outline is, is quite important. So. Jerry, what are your thoughts, mate? Oh, I think it's nice to see the, the silver pony. It's the only bit of silver on the car, so uh, yeah. I quite like I think, it. I think um, we are blacking the car out, but if we black that out, we, we're kind of losing part of the character of the car. So, like I said, not everything is going to work, and I think in this case, we're going to leave it off. There we go guys, we're gonna end this episode right here. It's basically just a quick introduction of the car and some really uh, easy DIY mods, also not very expensive, stuff that you can do in what, half an afternoon, basically what we did. But of course there's more to come on this car, such as? Well, we'll still be needing to black out the bonnet vents, mm -hmm. probably the roof, 
We've got a small black spoiler to go on the back and then we'll be into the practical mods like bonnet struts, boot poppers, uh, we've still got the suspension to do and then by then we would have thought of a few more. Yeah exactly, so as we go through this series I think the mods will get a little bit more technical as we go. But as far as the car looks today, are you happy with it? Massively. Yeah, yeah, it was easy, easier than we thought, came up good, all done. Yeah, perfect. I think it's a really good starting spot um, for future modifications. But what do you guys think? I know there are any small changes. Do you like them? Leave me a comment below and uh, let me know what you think. But that's it for this episode. Uh, if you enjoy this kind of stuff and you want to see more of it, make sure you hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell as well so you won't miss any future updates. But that's it for today. We'll see you in the next video.